All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's All right. So first and foremost, y'all, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, all praises to how Bashman was shy. Um, in this video, I kind of want to touch on, on the topic that uh, a lot of people have a problem with, especially Christians, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's, it's the main issue that, you know, people have when it comes down to Hebrew Israelites because of the fact that, uh, according to what the Bible says, not just, not just what, what I say and what, you know what I'm saying, many other Hebrew Israelites say, but according to what the Bible says, only Israelites can receive salvation. But what a lot of Christians do and what a lot of people do who may be, who may not believe in that, you try to find ways to try, try to find many uh, stories or many people in the Bible that may have received something you know what I'm saying? Or that may have got some type of, I guess, some type of um uh blessing or whatever from God. And they use that to their advantage to say that, oh, look, so you know what I'm saying, uh, since this non-Israelite got a blessing or this happens to this non-Israelite, that means that oh, they, they could be saved too. Who who hooray? Like, no, no. And I'm gonna just kind of like talk about a few, a few um people in the Bible, and the main people in the Bible that you know I hear a lot. A lot, you know what I'm saying? These these are the main people that you know people try to bring up when it come down to saying that oh Gentiles can be saved because of these few examples. So let's let's go again to it real quick. Let's go again to it. So share my screen. And I'm gonna just show y'all how it's it's just a huge problem. It's a huge problem to even say that you know these these specific people, you know what I'm saying, that's in the Bible, that because something happened to them in, in a certain story, whatever it may be. That means that they can receive salvation as well, along with, you know what I'm saying, all other people, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's go to it. So, first person I want to get into is Rahab, all right? Rahab. Now, we all know what Rahab, all right? Rahab, basically, she she um did something to basically help the Israelites or to benefit the Israelites, right? So, she was spared from being uh, being killed by um the uh, Israelites were invading Jericho because the Israelites invaded Jericho at one point in time. It basically destroyed the whole land and, you know, came and just caused hell, you know what I'm saying? But because Rahab helped the Israelites, she was spared, all right? Now, does that mean that she received salvation in any way, shape, or form? No. No. She didn't. She, and it says right here, it says, only right here, let me just read, read, read this verse real quick, all right? It says, in the, in the city shall be a curse, even it and all that are therein to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, and uh, she all that with her in her house because she hid the messengers that were sent. All right, <clears throat> so let's get a little bit more. Okay, Rahab, her father, her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had, and they brought out um, all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. All right, so basically, as y'all see right here, as y'all see right here, like I said, she basically did something to benefit the Israelites. All right, she did something, to, even though she was the harlot. And she was also um, a non-Israelite, but she did something. She did something to benefit the Israelites. All right. Now, the reason I want to bring this up and bring her up specifically is because, first of all, what ethnicity or nationality is he? Like, what 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 is her so-called race? All right. That's the main thing that we got. We got to like you know, saying bring up. We got to we got to know. So Rahab. Do, 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 do. Let me see. Now she now she was married to an Israelite. That's for one. But let me let me show you right here. It says right here, Rahab, Rahab, or Rakab, How you want to say that? It's a different way to say it. But it says she is a Canaanitess, a Canaanitess or a Canaanite. All right, she is a Canaanite. Okay, so people don't don't go into prophecies to even see exactly what's going to be the role of the Canaanites in the kingdom. Because everybody want to always say that oh. Look at what look at what Rahab did. Well, she did that. That proves that you know what I'm saying that uh, non-Israelites can be saved, right? Because she was a Canaanite. But once again, what is the role of the Canaanites in the kingdom? What is their role? I'm not going to get too deep into you know what I'm saying listen about the Canaanites and everything, but <clears throat> I just want to show y'all just what's going to happen or wh where the Canaanites going to be when it come down to the kingdom. Because because once let me let me get this let me, let me get this out of the way real quick, right? There will be Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? On this earth, when the when the new heaven and new earth is established, there will be Gentiles there, here. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole other topic in terms of how the new heaven and new earth is not going to be in the sky. 
it's not going to be some just weird place where it's going to be on this earth again. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if everything's going to come back to this earth, you know what I'm saying? So the, the, there will be Gentiles, you know what I'm saying, on this earth. And there will be Gentiles that will be in the kingdom with the Israelites, but there will be there, there will be servants. And I'm, I'm going to get that in a minute as well. But there's a certain role that each, you know what I'm saying, um, each uh, specific nation will, uh, will uh, play. And there's a certain, a certain fate for, you know what I'm saying, these nations, all right? <clears throat> so, like I said, keep in mind, Rahab, she's a Canaanite. Let's see what's going to happen, what, what's going to be the role of the Canaanites in the kingdom, all right? So, Zechariah 14, 21, it says right here, Yea, uh, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take, take of them and see their end. And in that day, and in that day, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So Rahab, whether she's regenerated into the kingdom as somebody else, it don't matter, it don't matter what it is, she's still a Canaanite. And, there, and it says that her role in the kingdom and the house of the Lord, she won't, she won't, be, she won't even be there. Her and all the other Canaanites, they would not be in the kingdom at all. Even if people try to go to Matthew 15, 24, that Canaanite, and even if you go to that verse, it, it, it cuts, you know what I'm saying, the whole, the whole idea that Gentiles can, can receive salvation, even though a lot of Christians try to, try to superimpose their own Christian ideology into the Bible. But <clears throat> literally, you can't, you can't try to debunk prophecy. You can't try to debunk prophecy in what it says. It literally says, in that day, there will be no more Canaanites in the house of the Lord. No more. All right. So to sit here and try to say that, oh, look at what, look at what Rahab did. What Rahab did, this proves that all is that um all non-Israelites can be saved, or that other people can be saved besides just Israelites. No, it doesn't, because prophecy don't don't allow with that. And the rest in the whole Bible doesn't even allow with that that idea that non-Israelites can be can be saved or can be on that same level of salvation as uh as Israelites at all. All right. Now, another person, another person I want to get into, and I, I'm, I'm going I'm to get to uh, uh, Matthew, Matthew 15 in a minute and break that down, but Ruth. Ruth is another person that a lot of people go to to try to prove that, oh, look at, look at, look at Ruth's, Ruth's story. Look at what Ruth did. Ruth, she, she, she's, uh, she's not an Israelite, but she, she, was, uh, still connected, she was still connected to the, to the uh, Israelites in some way, shape, or form, and she was still accepted by them or whatever. First of all, Ruth, Ruth, the only use she had was to basically further the lineage of the Israelites. That's all she was used for. That is all she was used for. All right. People try to use certain verses. Let me see what that, what that verse was. Um, a certain verse that people try to use. Or they may try to say right here, something like this, right? They say, oh, look, Ruth and Rahab, they were in the lineage of Christ. They try to say things like that to try to make it seem like that. Oh, that that's, that's I guess... That that's very important, you know what I'm saying? To note, it's because they're in the lineage of Christ. That means that uh they get they get the same salvation. Just because you're in the lineage does not that that just mean, that means you play a certain role. Like once again, Rahab and Ruth, they were not Israelites, but they still play a certain role in terms of making children for Israelites. That can happen. Non-Israelites can be used to make children for Israelites, and that that's seen in even in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament with Jacob, with Jacob, right? When Jacob had to, Jacob himself, when he had to make the Israelites, he used his his uh his uh wife's servants to make kids, and they were not Israelites. So I think it was uh Rachel, Rachel and Leah, Rachel and Leah. I, I know Rachel for sure. Rachel cannot uh bear children at, at one point in time, right? So Jacob had to have sex with um with, uh, her servants to make to make um kids and to make the other uh, you know the rest of the uh kids. To uh, make the um so child to Israel, you know what I'm saying? And the same thing with Leah. Leah gave her gave one of her servants to Jacob, which was a non-Israelite, so that he can bear another, another child to you know complete the twelve tribes. You know what I'm saying? So it's many many instances in the Bible where non-Israelites can be used. You know what I'm saying? To make children or to to be a part of a, of a, I guess you could say um this the making of Israelites basically. But that does not mean that they have salvation though. You know what I'm saying? Just because they're they're being used for something, or that they're being included in something, or that or, or or their name is mentioned, that that does not mean that that that's that's equivalent equivalent to salvation at all. You gotta know exactly what's going on within the text, the context, and just see exactly what they were used for. Why are they there? 
are they mentioned and all that stuff. Even people try to go try to go even to a, to a certain point to say that, oh look, Ruth, she has her own book in the Bible. So that means that she got she got salvation. Why why would they if, if everything was about Israel, why does why does Ruth have her own book in the Bible? That means nothing at all. That means nothing at all. And plus the Ruth, the Ruth was basically just a, um like a uh, what, 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 what's what's what I'm looking for? Um like a um an extension of the book of Judges, basically. That's what it was. Because this was this was in the same time period of Judges. So that's all it is. This fact that it, it mentioned the the um the um importance of Ruth when it comes down to furthering the lineage of Israelites. Because everybody had had a problem with um because there, there, there is a law that says that you know that you can't intermarry, you know what I'm saying, with uh non-Israelites, but people didn't understand the ex the exception when it come down to how non-Israelites can be used, they can still they can still have sex with them, but they just can't, like you know what I'm saying, um uh what, what were I looking for? Basically try to create a whole family in terms of in terms of like trying to build with them, grow with them, and you know what I'm saying, create a deep bond with them to the point where they're focused on, you know what I'm saying, oh, I want to have her as my wife and I want to I want to live with her forever. And we're going to be happily ever after. And like, no, no. You can you can use Gentiles and use non Israelites to to, uh, to have sex with and to make kids with. And that's that's what they did with Ruth. With Ruth, she had she had a kid, but it was still in the name of Naomi, if I remember correctly. She still had a kid, but that kid was was put was basically placed. You know what I'm saying? Or it it was given. You know what I'm saying? To Naomi to be her kid because Naomi she couldn't bear any children. Naomi cannot bear any children in this story of Ruth. So Ruth was used by Boaz, <clears throat> let's call it, to bear a son for Naomi. That's all. Point blank period. That's all. Once again, the same thing applied with uh, Rachel. Uh, Rachel, she couldn't bear any kids at that time. So Jacob had to use, had to have sex with one of her servants to bear children for her. Nothing wrong with that at all. If something, if something was wrong with that, then the Most High wouldn't even, wouldn't even condone it. You know what I'm saying? But the whole point I'm trying to make with this whole, whole thing is, people, like I said, people got to understand what's going on in these stories to see exactly why were they being used, why are they being mentioned, all that stuff. They were not mentioned for salvation. Just because they're mentioned in the same lineage that, that, that does not mean they have salvation. People just think everything that connects everything that connects to Christ is it, salvific. It's not, you know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> the whole point I'm trying to make right here, right? So Ruth, like I said, one thing I keep in mind is that Ruth, you got to figure out what what's her so-called nationality? What's her so-called race? All right. Like I already said with uh, uh, Rahab, Rahab, she was a Canaanite. All right. And we already proved in Zechariah 14, 21 that Canaanites, they don't even have any place in the house of the Lord, you know what I'm saying, in, in the kingdom. They don't have no place there. They won't they won't even be, be there at all. They're, they're going to be very low in status in the kingdom. All right. <clears throat> so with the with Ruth, Ruth, she's a Moabite. All right, and everybody can agree. Even though a lot of a lot of Israelites try to say that, oh, Ruth, she she's a uh, Israelite or whatever. She's not. She's not an Israelite at all. The text clearly states that she's a Moabite. All right, she is. She's a Moabite. Okay. Now let's see what the Bible says about Moabites. Because, like I said, there are certain prophecies in the Bible that hasn't been fulfilled just yet. All right. So let's see what what prophecy talks about on um, Moabites and what's going to happen to them. All right. Numbers 24 and 17, it says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter that and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab. And it shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Shep. Then it says, In Edom shall be a possession. All right. That's that's just an, another, you know what I'm saying, like side note. The whole point is it says that this star. Which is Christ, which many people, many people, even Christians can, can agree to this. This star coming out of Jacob is Christ, and it says that He is going to smite the corners of Moab. Why don't Why don't Christians never never mention this, mention these things? That's one thing I, I don't get. Like this, this is why like I be on Christianity here so much because of the fact that they, they don't mention everything that you know what I'm saying that needs to, that needs to be mentioned. They always they always talk about the good, the good, the good, but they never talk about the bad. And that's that's a false balance. It's Proverbs 21. What's that verse is? What, what's that verse? It's Proverbs 11. 
Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So this verse is saying how basically it goes, this verse is like literally talking about Christianity. Because of the fact that Christianity, they talk about all the all the good, 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 good. Like the bad that they do talk about is the so-called struggles and the so-called temptations you're going to go through. But they never talk about the actual like you know, like I'm talking about like you come out of the prophecies that say that certain people will be destroyed, that everybody won't make it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> they they try to give everybody a chance, but literally that's that's not what the Bible says at all. That's that's for one. The Bible don't say that at all. And for two, you got literally have you literally have prophecies. That that's doing nothing but damning, you know what I'm saying, certain nations. That's that's all that's all it's doing. So the fact that they're they're preaching just all this prosperity teaching, everything that sounds good, just good, 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 and nothing bad. That's a false balance. You know what I'm saying? That's a false balance. So like I said, why don't Christians never mention these verses like number 24, number 24, where it says that literally Christ is gonna be is gonna come to destroy Moab. They never mention this at all. They never never do. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because the fact that they're trying to, you know, um, basically uh, save everybody, which they can't. And it's preaching false doctrine and, and preaching heresies and preaching things that, that gets them money, you know what I'm saying? Gets them revenue, attraction, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 their whole, you know what I'm saying, goal when it comes down to preaching this false doctrine. But the whole point I'm trying to make is that there are little, literally prophecies in the Bible. It does nothing but just damn, and it just it talks about destruction for certain nations. So Zechariah 14, 21 and Numbers 24 and 17 literally talks about how Moabites and Canaanites, they're going to be destroyed. So you can't get around that at all. You can't try to sit here and say that, oh, look, look at Rahab and look at look at Ruth. Rahab and Ruth are two, two, two uh, people in the Bible. They're not Israelites. What will happen to them? Well, you can see, you can talk about what happens to them. But what's going to happen to them in the future? What's going to happen to them and their people in the future? What about that? But people never talk about those 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 prophecies. That's nothing but just destruction for them. <clears throat> Slocky, okay, y'all. But let me go ahead and get some, I'm gonna get one more verse for y'all. I'm gonna break down this last last verse for y'all and show y'all exactly. Because I don't gotta I don't gotta go too deep into you know what I'm saying this Bible to try to prove to y'all that you know what I'm saying non-Israelites can be saved and that they don't have the same salvation as um Israelites. I don't got to, but I'm gonna just kind of focus on on a few a few uh what's called verses that people may try to bring up and say that non-Israelites can be saved. All right. <clears throat> so Matthew 15, and it's it's crazy how people like they try to they try to ignore all these verses, I don't, I don't understand it. It's like people just ignore everything that Christ said. I don't, I don't get it. Now like y'all always say, "Oh, we got, we, we, we got to uh, live the same that Christ lived, and you got to go by what, what Christ said." And you know, you love him, you love us, like you love your Savior so much. But anytime you say anything, or we bring up things that he that he say that may not really uh you, you you don't agree with or whatever, you know, it's it's like oh you, you turn to a non-believer almost, you turn to an atheist. You might might as well be too. If, if everything that we bring up that, that 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 is I guess bad in the Bible, if everything that, that we bring up is bad, you might as well you might as well turn to an atheist. Might as well, because you don't believe in the Bible. Like anytime anytime a Christian may may hear these verses, they turn to non-believers instantly, like an instant non-believer, because it, because it's it's not it's not uh, fitting their their doctrine that everybody can be saved and the Bible don't say that at all, but. It's all good. So Matthew 15, Matthew 15. All right. I'm going to start at verse 22 or 21. It says, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Zidane. All right. So when it says he departed to the coast, it's, it's not saying that he left. He, he, he didn't leave Israel. He just, there was a certain part of, uh, of um, Tyre and Zidane that was surrounding Israel. All right. So he went to he went to a, he still stayed in Israel, but it just it, he just went around a part where it was kind of like bordering Israel and like you know other nations. That's all, that's all he was doing. All right. So it says, and behold, a woman of a woman of Canaan. So this is like Canaanite area, all right, or Hamite area, whatever you want to say. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast, cried to him, saying, "Have mercy on me, O me, like him. Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil." 
So <clears throat> a lot of Christians, when they come out to this verse, they fail to realize like exactly what's going on. They skip over everything and just go straight to just what, what they want to prove and, you know, put their own doctrine, their, their own twist and flip on it. And it makes no sense according to what the text is. So for one, we all know that she's a, she's a, okay, she's a woman of Canaan. She's, Can, she's, she's a Canaanite, that's one. And for two, what was the reason she came with Christ in the first place? According to the Bible, like as you as you're reading right now, the main reason why this woman of Canaan came to Christ is because of the fact that her daughter was possessed with a demon. All right. That was the only reason why she came up to him. She didn't talk about no salvation. She didn't talk about no, can I be saved? No, can I be baptized? She didn't talk about none of that at all. The only reason that she came up to Christ was because she wanted to have her daughter healed from a, from a demon. That's it. <clears throat> but look, look what happened. Look what happened after after she, after she came up to him. Look, look what Christ did. Verse twenty three. But he answered her not a word. But I thought Christ loved everybody the same. Is, is that is that nice of Christ? Is that nice of Jesus to ignore this woman? Is that nice? Is that nice of him? I thought he, I thought he came for everybody. If he came for everybody, why did he why did he ignore this Canaanite woman when she when she had a, a, a her daughter was uh possessed with a demon? Why did why did she ignore, why did he ignore her? If he loved her that much, if he loves everybody, that don't make no sense. <clears throat> and not only that, his disciples in the next verse, I mean next next uh, sentence. It says his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cried after us. So literally, Christ and the disciples, they both was like, nah, like, get her out of here. Like, they, like Christ did not care about her. And then furthermore, the, his disciples came and said, like, nah, she, she, need, to, she need to go. She need to go. She, 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 we ain't got everything that we're doing right now. It ain't got nothing to do with you. We're about God's business. We're about God's work. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're about God's will. You need to leave. We don't care about you right now. We're focusing on our, on our people. And even Christ himself, Christ himself exactly told, told her his mission. Not only told her, but literally everybody that's reading this text, this, is the, this was the mission of Christ right here in, in your face. Verse 24, but he answered and said, I am, not, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is his words. But people just, just, just ignore that. They ignore everything that he said right here. This one verse that they, they ignore this and try to go to another verse and say that, oh, well, look, look what this said. No, deal with what Christ said. Why did Christ say, I am not sent, but to the lost of the house of Israel? Why did he say that? Was there any verse where he, where he said, where Christ himself said that, oh, I am sent for everyone. I am sent for all people so that, you know, any, anybody that just, you know, say, come to me, I, I will accept you in and I'll love you the same as, as my people. Like, no. No. You got to deal with what Christ said right here. He said himself, I am not sent, but to the lost of the house of Israel. All right. Then verse 25. Then, then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Right? Lord, help me. So she she she, she, she was st she's still there, basically begging him, like, like, can you help me, please? Like, I just, I just need my daughter to be healed. She, once again, nothing about salvation, nothing about receiving baptism, none, none, like, that, none like that at all. Just strictly, her daughter is, is, is vexed with the devil, and that's why she's there. Christians, try, Christians they, try, they try to flip this story, make it seem like something bigger than, 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 than it really is, all right? Now, verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not meat. What, is, what does that mean? It is not meat means right. Basically saying, he said, it is, it is not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So this Canaanite woman, or this non-Israelite that people say can receive salvation, Christ called her a dog. And we know that in, in modern day terms, we know, we know that word can mean something else. A dog is the same thing as, as a what? We all know what that means. And also that go, even goes to the fact of saying, how yeah, Christians Chris try to say that, oh, it's a sin of cuss. But literally like what Christ said to her was literally a cuss word back then. <clears throat> or a so-called offensive term or, or profanity, I guess. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> So he said himself, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Who are the children? The children are obviously Israel. We should know that. Everybody should know that, that that's who the children are. What is the bread? The bread is Christ. Basically, we're referencing, referencing, we're talking about the, uh, the salvation that Christ is going to give to his children, or to the Israelites, all right? 
So he's saying that it is not right to take the salvation that, that's for Israel, for Israel only, and give it to dogs. For the dogs, dogs are Gentiles, non-Israelites, people like Canaanite women. That's what he's saying. That's literally what's going on right here. All right? It is not right to take the children's salvation or take anything that Christ is trying to do. Like he, It's not right to take, take that and give it to Gentiles. All right? Then in verse 27, even the Canaanite woman herself admitted that what he was saying was right. I heard a Christian try, try to uh, say how, uh, I guess, um, <clears throat> Christ was trying to, I guess, trick her. He was trying to trick her to make it, make it seem like that, um, I guess, trying, trying to test her faith or whatever. Trying to trick her to make it seem like that, that he did not come for her when he really, when he really did. So basically, y'all trying to say that Christ, for, who, for whoever thinks that, Trying to say that Christ, what Christ did, he was being very, I guess, deceitful per, on purpose to, uh, I guess, prove or try to see where this can, where the, where this Canaanite woman faith was. But for one, if if you say that Christ was, I guess, being deceitful on purpose, that goes against this verse right here. First Peter, right here. First Peter. 2 and 22. It says right here, I'm sorry, verse 21. For even here unto where ye were, were ye called, because Christ also, also suffered Christ also suffered for us, leaving an example that ye should follow his, his steps, who did no sin, neither, neither was guile found in his mouth. Neither was guile found in his mouth. What does guile mean? Guile basically means trickery, deceit, deceit. Let's look it up so I'll show y'all what it really means. Look, craft, deceit, guile. Anything that's that basically like try to trick people, right? That's what he's saying. So when people try to sit here and say that, oh, in Matthew 15, 24, that when I mean, Christ, uh, Christ, I guess he was trying to like, I guess, test her faith by tricking her, making it seem like that, oh, uh, salvation was wasn't for you when it really was. But literally, that verse in First Peter says that Peter himself said that Christ, he had no trickery, no guile, no deceitfulness in his mouth at all. He didn't deceive nobody at all. Not even his Canaanite woman. Everything that he was saying was, was, was true. And even the Canaanite woman himself, herself said that what he said was true. So the fact that people are trying to, trying to make, y'all trying, it's like, y'all got to understand, y'all don't know the Bible. Y'all try to make, make, make stuff, y'all try to find this, all these loopholes to, 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 you know, give salvation to Christ. I mean, not Christ. I try to find all these loopholes to give salvation to non-Israelites when it just it just can't happen. When you do that, you lie on the Bible, you make yourself look dumb. Especially when you when you come across, you know what I'm saying, Israelites that really look that really know the Bible, you make yourself look look dumb. It look very unlearned and you know, this uneducated when it comes out to these to these scriptures. I'm not saying that you don't know nothing at all, but the fact that you're trying to basically you're trying so hard to just do, you're trying so hard to basically make the Bible right in your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Try to make salvation for everybody is, is, is not going to help you at all. Just be truthful, be truthful to what the word says and that's it. All right. But like I said, if people are trying to say that what Christ said was trying to trick her, literally the Canaanite woman in the next verse says truth, Lord. So literally everything that, 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 uh, Christ was saying before this, before that verse, this this non-Israelite was saying that what he said was true. This non-Israelite woman was saying that what he said was true. She said, "Truth, Lord." Yet the dogs, some of the uh, non the Gentiles, right, non-Israelites, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. So not only did she she admit that what Christ said was was right. But she admitted to being a dog. She admitted that the salvation was only for Israel. She admitted that she wasn't worthy, you know what I'm saying, of the salvation. <clears throat> she admitted that, you know, she only gets a crumb, not, not, the, full, not the full bread. And she admitted that the Israelites at some point in time is going to be is basically, basically the masters and, and above her. Literally, that's what's going on in this whole entire chapter. But people, people are trying to sit here and try to, try to make it seem like that old oh, salvation was given to her. Which it wasn't at all. They try to say, "Oh, look, she had faith." So you know, all you gotta do is have faith. When you have faith, then you're saved by Christ. But let, let's see, let's see what happened though. 
in, in the next verse, all right? Verse 28, it says right here, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Where, where in this verse or in this entire chapter does it say that salvation was given to this woman? Where? Show me where. Because that's 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 called eisegesis. Basically meaning that you're trying to base, like I said, superimpose your or force your own ideology or your own um your own opinion into this text. You're trying to make the text say what you want it to say instead of looking at it for what it says in front of your face. It says right here, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So from the from verse 22 to verse 28, first of all, verse 22, like I said, I gave you, I gave you a reason why this woman came to Christ in the first place. The main reason why she came to Christ was because her daughter, it says it right here. Let's go back to it just in case somebody missed it. It says right here, she said, have mercy on me. O oh Lord, thy son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. So the main reason why she came to him was because her daughter had a demon. When you go to verse 28, when her faith allowed her daughter to be healed from that demon. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. If you think anything more than that or try to try to say that, oh, she got salvation, you're, you're literally adding to the text. Literally. You are literally adding to the text. Because nowhere in this in this in this verse, in these verses, does it say that she got salvation after she had faith. Because even with her having faith, she was still called a dog. She was still called a Canaanite. A lot of people try to say that, oh, to be a part of Israel, you gotta have faith or whatever. You can be a part of a spiritual Israel. But literally, she had faith and was still called a Canaanite, still called, called a dog. This doesn't make any sense at all. And at the same time, too, like I said, within this chapter, what only, what only happened to her is that her daughter was healed. And that's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, let's also go to another verse real quick <clears throat> where people try to, uh, this is going to be going to be my last verse. I'm, I'm going to end it. So I, I, could, I could go on all day. You know what I'm saying? I could. I could make this video, you know what I'm saying, very long, but I'm not going to make it too, too long. I just want to deal with this, you know what I'm saying, like certain, certain, certain uh, stories. And certain, certain, uh, you know, um, certain verses in the Bible that people try to use to say that, oh, Israelites, I mean, non-Israelites can receive salvation. All right. So Isaiah 42 and 6, I know it says that, um, what you call it, the Israelites will be a light to the Gentiles. And they try to say that, oh, like non-Israelites can, that, that light to the Gentiles is salvation. All right. But let's, let's go to the prophecy where it says, or oh, oh, when, first of all, when we're going to be a light to the Gentiles and exactly what's going to be happening. When we were, when we are that light, so let's see let's see what's happening, All right? So literally, the heading of this whole chapter in Isaiah sixty it says a glorified Zion, a glorified Zion, meaning that Israel will, will receive the glory. All right. Even Romans nine and four says that. Let me go to it real quick. Real quick, it says who are Israelites to whom pertain of the adoption in the glory? It says in the covenants and the giving of the law. And the service of God and the promises. So literally, this this like the Bible, this this is like like the whole Bible in one. This is like a summary of the whole Bible, talking about the Israelites and how everything in this Bible pertains to them and only them. And it says even the glory, even the glory, pertains to Israel, nobody else. All right, let's go back. So in verse one, Isaiah sixteen and one it says, "Arise, shine, for thy light is come." And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. All right. So once again, when you use precept upon precept, line upon line, you understand that, like I said, Romans 94, the glory pertains to Israel. Right. So only Israel can get this glory. So verse two, then it says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness, the people. But the Lord shall arise, shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So. It's saying that all these other nations, they're going to be in the spiritual darkness. They're not going to be having, they're not going to have that same truth. They're not going to have that same luxury that we have with the most High being on our, on our side. All right. Everybody else is going to be in the spiritual darkness looking for, looking for light while we have the, we have the light. You know what I'm saying? That's what this verse is talking about. Okay. Then in verse three, it talks about how the, how the Gentiles, what's going to, what's, what's, what the Gentiles going to do? It says, 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. So we already have the light. We already have the light. But it's saying that the Gentiles, they're going to come to us. And there's other prophecies that say the exact same thing. All right. This is, is this this is uh, in reference to the uh, millennial kingdom. The so-called thousand years where, you know, what I'm saying where um, they're going to be in captivity to us. All right. With them being in captivity to us and building up our nations after their captivity, they're going to be released back to their lands. So that 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 launch a uh, prophecy. I think that's uh, I forgot what verse it was. But I know it's, it's a verse somewhere. Um, I think it's Zechariah, I think, where it says how basically like they're gonna, when they when they are in our land for these thousand years, they're going to be in captivity. They're going to build up our um our um nation, everything. They're going to build up our walls, all that stuff like that. After they're done with that, they're going to be released back to their lands, and they're going to still serve us and still serve the Most High and his, and his laws and only only serve our God. If they don't, they'll be destroyed for that. All right, and this, and this exact same chapter says the exact same thing. All right, so said the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Uh, let me see. Okay, Azariah, they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Okay, well, this 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 kind of just summarizing, saying how the Gentiles are going to see us. They're going to see us. You know what I'm saying? Living living on high and mighty. They're going to see us being glorified. And they're going they're going to want to come to us. Try to try to like I guess inherit that that light in some way, shape, or form. They they see us us living lavish while they're struggling. So they're, they're going to want to come to us instead. You know what I'm saying? But look what it says. What they're going to what they're going to be doing. When they receive this light, and when they come to this light, right? Verse 10, it says, And the sons of strangers, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and, thy, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So it's saying that these Gentiles, these, these non Israelites, they're going to be building up our walls in the kingdom. How is that salvation in any way, shape, or form? They're building up walls, Build, building, you know what I'm saying, our, our temples and everything, building our, our, our houses and, and everything. Like, how is that salvation? How? When you're when you're literally working day and night, you know what I'm saying? You're working day and night for some, for somebody without pay. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. How is that? How, how is this salvation? How is this this light something positive for them? It doesn't make any sense. All right. You gotta read, you gotta, because no, no, I promise you, no Christian, no Christian can 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 break down this this chapter at all. No Christian can even get around this chapter. Nobody, not not even nobody, nobody. Anybody who believes that that, you know what I'm saying, Christ or that salvation for everybody, they cannot go around this chapter at all. At all. Like I said, you can't go, you can't, you can't try to debunk prophecy. That's why prophecies. Prophecies are like one of my favorite, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, things of the Bible because of the fact that it literally debunks Christianity like in a heartbeat. It debunks any doctrine in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. If you try to try to come against us, try to say that, oh, like this, this, and this, and this, okay, go to, let's, go to, let's go to prophecy. Let's go to prophecy and see what it says about this and that. Literally, prophecies are like my favorite things. It's, it's my favorite thing to even read in the Bible because literally, it literally debunks any, any type of ideology that everybody can be saved when, you know, prophecies say otherwise. You know what I'm saying? Talks about the destruction, destruction of the Gentiles. Talks about the glorification of Israelites. Salvation being for them and them only. Like, literally, that's, that's what the prophecies say. All of them. Let's continue. Uh, let me see. Verse 12 says, For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee, so the nation and kingdom that will not serve the Israelites shall perish. How is, the, how is that? People think that in the kingdom... In, in, in the new heaven, new earth, it's going to be everybody's going to be holding hands, singing kumbaya, you know what I'm saying, loving each other, hugging each other. That's not how it's going to be at all. At all. It literally says, the nation of the kingdom that will not serve the Israelites, they will perish. They will be killed. They will be, destro they will be destroyed. How are you on the same level as somebody that you serve? It? How, are you, how, are you, how are you a servant, still, but still on the, on the, still, you still got the same importance to the Most High? It doesn't make any sense at all. It's lucky, y'all. But all right. 
let me see. Uh, it's locked, y'all. Yeah. So, verse 14 as well, right? Verse 14. It says right here, The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of Yahweh, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. So literally, how, how, is, how, is, this, how is this salvation? I don't, I don't understand it. How is it salvation? How is, how is salvation building walls for Israelites, bowing down to Israelites and serving them? How, how is that salvation? How? How is that equality? It doesn't make sense to me at all. And in this same notion, it's talked about in Revelation. I'm going to Revelation 13 real quick. Revelation 13 and 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. The same thing is said right here. In these verses, the ones, the ones that afflicted us, the ones that put us in captivity, the ones that, that did us wrong, they were going to captivity as well. It's lock here. It's lock here. I got a test message, but I'm about to get ready to wrap this up anyway. Just lock it. Let me do something real quick. It's lock here. I uh, had to uh, do this text real quick. Sometimes I, I got to pause my own portals and, and stuff like that. I got be receiving texts and phone calls and stuff like that, but it's all good. All right, but um, to, basically to conclude this whole thing, because like I ain't got to go too deep into you know, saying a lot, a lot more, even though I can if I want to. But the whole point is that salvation is only for Israel. And it's really many, many different ways you can, you can prove that. Many different ways you can prove that. We can even go to go to Paul's writings. We can go to all the apostles. We can go to the Book of Acts. We can go to all the. We can go to like literally every every book in the Bible to really prove to you how salvation only for Israel and literally this whole Bible pertains to Israel and nobody else. Literally, literally, and the fact that you know what I'm saying we got Christians trying to you know include everybody else, try to save everybody else when they can't. It's literally impossible, and literally the Bible don't even say that everybody can be saved anyway. <laughs> literally, so um, but. That's all I got for you on this video. Um, you know, hopefully this video kind of clear up a lot of things in terms of uh, who salvation is for. And even those little stories people try to bring up with Rahab and with um with Ruth, with the Canaanite woman, you know what I'm saying, with all these other verses, you know what I'm saying, saying that, that the Israelites would be a light to the Gentiles. Like all these verses, they a lot of people have a misunderstanding of and don't really know what it means, or they may know what it means, but they try so hard to, you know what I'm saying, superimpose their own ideology into the text that they want it means something something else when they really don't. But, you know, that's why the Most High, he gave this word to the Israelites so that they can really, you know what I'm saying, properly break it down so that people understand what's going on in this text. And um, I just hope everything made sense. Even if you don't, if you don't, if you don't agree with it, you got to deal with it. If you don't agree with it, that's, that's, that's how you feel. The Bible, the Bible, when it comes out to like feelings, it don't, it don't matter. You got to exclude, exclude your feelings and exclude your own opinions when it comes out to the Bible. You gotta go based off what the text says. You don't go if you don't go if you don't go based off what the text says. At that point, you just need to put the Bible down because you you're leaning towards your own you're leaning towards your own understanding. You know I'm saying not trying to really fully understand what's going on within the, within the text within you know what I'm saying the uh the, uh, the verses. You know what I'm saying. But that's all I got for y'all. I'm gonna just leave y'all with that. I want to end this by giving all praise to you. How about Shalom Shah? And until next time, Shalom.